Derek Watt, former fullback for the Los Angeles Chargers, has now decided to sign with the Pittsburgh Steelers and his brother, TJ Watt. TJ Watt has recently been dominating the NFL as an edge player, and their brother JJ isn't no slouch either. With that said, it begs the question, how did Derek choose his position? Was it their natural abilities based off their body types? Because they don't look that different. Anyways, I've always enjoyed watching Derek Watt, and I don't know why. Maybe it's because I played fullback in high school and he's a fullback. But maybe it's actually because I can telepathically connect to him because he has the same birthday as me. And I know that that's why he also likes me. But let's get back to the main point of the video, which is to discuss the name differences between these three brothers. First off, we've got J.J. Watt, or Justin James Watt, who is the oldest brother. Next, we'll mention the youngest of the bunch, which is T.J. Watt, or Trent Jordan Watt. And lastly, the subject of the video, we have the middlest Watt brother. He has no nickname. He simply goes by Derek Watt, or full name, Derek John Watt. Wait a minute! His name has been Derek John Watt this entire time and no one has told me? Could you imagine if we had been calling him DJ Watt? Well, I guess there's nothing to fear here. I mean, we do have the power of math and science to help us figure out the solution to this problem. Okay, so Derek Watt ran seven times last season for 10 yards, he ran for a touchdown, and he caught three passes for 32 yards. Over his career, he's had 19 carries for 49 yards, a touchdown, and 10 receptions for 152 yards. Wow, 15.2 yards a catch. That's pretty impressive. But at the same time, if he was named DJ Watt, I'm sure he'd be a lot better of a player. I mean, you even got a look at his PFF grade, which was 57.5 last season, and that only ranked him 13th among fullbacks and... I mean, half the teams in this league don't even have a fullback, so fullback rank 13 isn't very high. Don't get me wrong, I am a big Derek Watt fan, but when you look at his brother's production at their positions, then you see J.J. Watt only played eight games last season, but he got four sacks, recovered two fumbles, had 24 tackles, three passes defensed, and a forced fumble, which gave him an 87 PFF grade, and uh, that ranked him ninth among edge players. And if you look at his brother TJ, TJ had two interceptions, eight passes defensed, eight forced fumbles, four fumble recoveries, 14 and a half sacks, and 55 tackles last season. With a 91.3 PFF grade, that ranked him first among edge defenders. That's pretty impressive. You can tell these Watt boys are bred to be dominant edge defenders. And especially if they have the name that's something J. It's going to go really well for them. And they obviously all grew up in the same setting. They all went to Pewaukee High School in Wisconsin and all graduated from the University of Wisconsin. Well, except for J.J. because he had one awkward stint playing tight end at Central Michigan, but they were probably just going to call him Justin on that team anyways. I guess the only question left to answer is how good would Derek Watt truly be if his name was D.J. Watt? I think the first thing to point out is that he'd obviously be an edge player now if his name is DJ, and he'd have to switch his number to something like number 95. Uh, I just figure 95 because he's the middle brother and he'll be the middle number of the brothers. So now it's time for a little alphabet lesson. The key letters being T, J, and D. And using some simple logic, you could assume that T would be the worst, J would be in between, and D would be the best. Now here's where it starts to get interesting, because we have to figure out how good DJ Watt truly would be. So we basically just have to assign numbers to letters. Since there's 26 letters in the alphabet, we know the first letters would be the best. So A would be ranked 26th, and for example, Z would be first. But, given the important letters, T would be 7, J would be 17, and D would be 23. Using that information, we can figure out that DJ Watt would be able to do 3.28571429 times as much as TJ Watt, and DJ Watt would be able to do 1.35294118 times as much as JJ Watt would be able to do. Now, with that information, I took TJ and JJ Watt's best individual stats from every one of their seasons and multiplied it based on whether it came from TJ or JJ 
to DJ's abilities, because DJ is much better, right? So here's what a season from DJ Watt would look like. He'd probably have about seven interceptions, two interceptions returned for touchdowns, 22 passes defended, 27 forced fumbles, seven fumble recoveries, two fumble returns for touchdowns, 110 tackles, 52 tackles for loss, two safeties, and 28 sacks. But we all know that men only care about one thing, and it's disgusting. It's the career sack total. And this may surprise people, but TJ Watt actually has a higher average sack total per season than JJ Watt, sitting at 11.5. And, and with that 11.5 sack total, times the multiplier for TJ to get to DJ's number, DJ is going to average about 38 sacks a season. Now, if we take the top five sack leaders of all time, then we see that those guys played an average of 16.4 seasons in the league, and 16.4 seasons times 38 sacks would give him a healthy 624 sacks for his career. Not a bad lead over second place. But there's still one thing to consider here. It's that what if I've been thinking about this improperly the entire time, and the progression between the letter of the first name is actually exponential. Now stick with me here, I'll try to run through this as quickly as possible. So this is based off the stats from TJ and JJ's 23-year-old seasons. TJ had 7 sacks, JJ had 20.5. Therefore, we can assume that the value of each letter between their name can be solved by using the equation 20.5 equals 7 times n to the 10th, because 10 is the difference between the letters in the first name of TJ and JJ. Then, you divide out the 7 to get the equation 2.92, 85, equals n to the 10th. Take the 10th root of that and find that your multiplier is now 1.11343682358. Now we can rewrite the equation as 7 times 1.13436823587.6 to the 16th, which will give us the rounded up total of 40 sacks in a single season, making DJ Watt the first player to ever achieve 40 sacks in a single season. And this man is now the greatest player in NFL history. So, uh, if you enjoyed the video... Thanks for watching. 2020 president candidate.